Vice President Kamala Harris saying last week the Virginia race would predict the outcomes in 2022 and 2024. And if that is the case, the Democrats could be looking at a tough road ahead, to say the least. She said it. She said it, not us. And even the New York we Times is saying this, admitting in a tweet that Terry McAuliffe's loss in Virginia, quote, darkens Democrats' outlook for the 2022 midterms. Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, joins us live in studio. Good morning to you, Joe. Wow. So with that tweet in mind, media reaction, take it away. Media reaction. Where to begin? Uh, I was at a funeral last night, so if I seem a little groggy-eyed, sure. I was watching MSNBC and oh, CNN, and it was a truly a, a, joke. a funeral. Really thought you were at an actual funeral for somebody who died. But right, right. I, uh, well played. Van Jones, who I usually like, compared Glenn Youngkin to the Delta variant as far as COVID is concerned, and he said that basically that Youngkin is a Delta variant of you Trump. You actually have that sound. Let's take a listen to what you're talking about. Yeah, let's see it. When this election is over in Virginia, we will know have we seen the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism, the Delta variant of Trumpism. In other words, Yunkin, uh, same disease, but spreads a lot faster and can get a lot more places. Wow. The same disease. I thought Yunkin kind of ran as a guy who wanted to fix education, who wants to fix the economy, who ran on the issues. Instead, we get that nonsense from a low-rated network. You think they're rating low now. Just wait till you see how depressed that audience is moving forward. MSNBC, I don't even want to repeat some of the things that were said on there, but basically you had Joy Reid, who's a conspiracy theorist, right? Makes Alex Jones look sane. She's named as a co-anchor last night to give you objective analysis. No, not, not exactly. She said that Republicans were dangerous and, again, compared them to terrorists. So you want media reaction and cable news. That's what I got to watch last night. Fun, fun. Yeah. But overall, a couple of takeaways last night. This is obviously a political earthquake. What's going on in my state in New Jersey, regardless if, if Jack Citarelli wins, even if he loses by a point, that's a state that Joe Biden won by 16 She's points. So You're giving away 15 points in 10 months. That's amazing. He still could win, by the way. Uh, look, Terry McAuliffe is a horrible candidate. That's another, uh, I'll just go to my notes here. He's also a recycled one. Sequels, as you know, Todd. Movies, candidates never do well. Glenn Youngkin ran a perfect campaign, again, because he focused on the issues, and he won without Donald Trump ever entering the state. If I'm Ron DeSantis and I'm watching this right now, I say, hmm, maybe I can pursue the right. 2024 nomination without Un even Unless Glenn runs. Youngkin decides he's going to say, yeah, maybe I'll run I'm in hearing that a lot Isn't more. Isn't it so funny how it's, it's it, we're looking at right. the Virginia race, we're already talking about We've the presidential election. Yeah. That's what we do in this business. <laughs> Let me broaden this out, and obviously you don't want to pontificate onto 2024, sure. but I'm curious as to which way you think the media will go. Will they go the Joy Reid, Van Jones route that, quite frankly, all the guarantees the Republicans will take the House and Senate in 2022? Yeah. Or do they go the New York Times route and sort of force the Democrat Party to say, look, we need to focus on the suburban soccer mom and the suburban soccer dad, because if you give them what they want, they will decide the election in your favor. Based on what we've seen in those newsrooms lately, as far as if you even have a dissenting opinion, you get eliminated. Remember the New York Times? They printed an op-ed from Tom Cotton saying, maybe we should use the National Guard when protests get violent. And the editor got ousted yeah. for even printing that. So you got to wonder who's running the show at those places at this point. But I did write about this two weeks ago. Joe Biden and the media, I guess, to your, your point, Todd, needs to do the pivot that Bill Clinton did in 1994 after he took an absolute shellacking. Newt Gingrich takes back the House. He pivoted back to the middle. He ended the welfare state. He said big government is over, as we know. Can you imagine a Democrat saying that now? Biden media has to do that, saying, look, guys, you're gone way too far to the left. You have to compromise with this evil other party that you keep saying is evil. Yeah. If and, you want to win elections, and we're you want to bring viewers see, back. And totally if President Biden does that with the social spending bill. That's the other big thing that we're looking out for today because of Glenn Youngkin's win. That could change gotcha. it all. Are so, you pivoting so, out? Thank She's you pivoting. so much for joining us. Day three. How's day three day going? Day three is very good. Very exciting day clock. three. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good for you. You earned it. Joe, thank you. You're Thanks. the best. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.